It's Friday, July 23rd. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Advocates for nursing home residents say the pandemic is far from over, especially for those who are vulnerable. Some worry the Delta variant poses a new threat to residents. At this point, a lot of times it isn't so much like, are, can we keep it out, but how do we keep it from spreading once it's in? Marjorie Moore is an advocate for St. Louis nursing home residents. She speaks with St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis about the challenges facing nursing homes in just a few minutes. The Missouri Supreme Court has unanimously decided the state must expand Medicaid to roughly 275,000 people. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports. The high court overruled a lower court decision striking down the voter-approved Medicaid expansion amendment. And the judges also said that the state must enroll people who are eligible under the measure, individuals who make up to $17,800 a year. Lowell Pearson was an attorney for three women seeking to get on Medicaid. He said the ruling constitutes a complete victory for his clients. On August 4th last year, the voters said, we want these people to get Medicaid, and uh, we're a major step closer to them getting it. It will take some time for the court case to work its way through the system, but it's likely Missourians who qualify under expansion could start signing up for the program in August. I'm Jason Rosenbaum. St. Louis Public Radio. St. Louis County leaders are putting forth their initial priorities for federal coronavirus relief funds. The county is receiving roughly $195 million from the American Rescue Plan. Executive Sam Page wants to spend some of that money on closing budgetary gaps, building a new health center in North County, and expanding workforce development programs. Councilwoman Rita Days says her colleagues are interested in public safety investments, including a new dispatch system for the police department. So we're looking at uh, that, that in terms of public safety. Uh, and then we, when you move on to economic development, of course, we're looking at jobs, uh, you know, how we can we can incentivize work uh, for, for folks who need that at this particular time. The council has held two work sessions on rescue plan funds. Members will have to vote on where to direct the money, and Page will have to sign off on any proposal. Doctors and some county leaders in the Metro East are again urging residents to get vaccinated against the coronavirus. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports the number of positive COVID cases has risen sharply in recent weeks, while vaccinations have not. Both St. Clair and Madison counties have COVID positivity rates above 9%, about three times higher than a month ago. Vaccination rates for both counties stayed around 40% in that same time frame. Dr. Jigger Hindia is the ICU medical director for Memorial Hospital in Belleville. He says nearly all new COVID hospitalizations are unvaccinated people. This disease at this point is largely preventable, and it is a shame that we have people coming back in that she didn't get vaccinated. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker hasn't said if he'll reimpose new coronavirus mitigations in the Metro East. He indicated he might do so if case numbers and hospitalizations continue to rise, but St. Clair County officials say they haven't heard of any imminent new restrictions. In Belleville, I'm Eric Schmid, St. Louis Public Radio. Missouri could receive up to $450 million as part of the agreement among several states drug company Johnson & Johnson, and three pharmaceutical distributors for their roles in the opioid epidemic. The full settlement depends on the participation of local governments. Attorney General Eric Schmidt is urging cities and counties to drop their lawsuits against the companies to achieve the maximum payout. Our lawsuit has always had a singular mission, attain justice for victims and the families of the victims of this decades-long opioid epidemic. Schmidt says the money received in the settlement will go to addiction, education, and treatment. Illinois is expected to receive $790 million from that overall $28 billion settlement. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency's first unclassified innovation center opens today at the T-Rex Business Incubator in downtown St. Louis. Moonshot Labs will collaborate with private industry and academics in advance of the new NGA West headquarters, which opens in St. Louis in 2025. T-Rex director Patty Hagan says they've been working on this deal since 2018. What this can mean for T-Rex and for downtown in our region is a real strengthening of the innovation technology ecosystem in St. Louis, especially around geospatial technology. 
The NGA says it chose T-Rex for its first unclassified center because of an already strong involvement in geospatial technology. The incubator has a geospatial innovation center with several partner companies. Nursing homes in the St. Louis region allowed residents to have visitors in the spring after months of isolation during the pandemic. The Delta variant could again put residents and workers in danger. St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis asked Marjorie Moore, executive director of Voice, that's a nonprofit which advocates for people who live in nursing homes, how the facilities are trying to keep residents and workers safe as infections rise. We are starting to see um, more of them. In fact, we got a call on Friday from a cluster, uh, three different facilities in about a two mile radius that all discovered clusters in their facilities. Um, so, you know, it's it's starting to happen here. Um, we don't know if it's we don't know if it's a Delta variant or, or which version of COVID-19 it is. We just know that it's COVID um, back in these facilities, which is a scary thing, I think, both for residents and non-residents. Have nursing homes done enough to ensure that their workers are vaccinated and, and putting the safeguards in to ensure that residents are protected from the virus? Each facility has done um, done different things. I think one of the things that has continued to strain facilities is the fact that a lot of their workforce is part-time, low-paid. Um, and that means that a lot of their workforce is also still working multiple jobs. And so you have people still going from facility to facility. So there is still that, that danger of, of the commingling. Um, in addition to that, a lot of the, the workers that we have are, are also in groups that are less likely to be vaccinated and that those are, those are their, their living conditions as well. So that becomes a, a real challenge. So should nursing homes require their workers to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I'm not a lawyer, (laughs) but, um, you know, honestly, I think if if facilities are able to find enough um, employees who have the vaccine or are willing to get the vaccine, I think that it is far more preferable to have a vaccinated staff than an unvaccinated staff. Are you concerned that the Delta variant or any other variants could have a shutdown similar to what we saw in homes last year? Yeah, that's actually a big worry in a lot of ways. And and that's why Voice is really behind the Essential Caregivers Act, um, because we really think that it's important that in the event that um, new rules are put in place where facilities need to shut down again, that residents have access to their loved ones, um, especially if their loved ones are subject to the same rules and regulations that staff are. Let's talk about this new proposed bill, the Essential Caregivers Act. If it is passed, what would this mean for homes in the St. Louis area? What the Essential Caregivers Act would do is allow each resident to appoint two people um, to basically be their designated essential caregivers. And what that would mean is that those two people would really have access to that resident, no matter what the public health orders were at any given time. So if there's another big closure due to COVID, or if during our next pandemic, or if whatever happens, a resident will be able to have access to at least two people. What do you want healthcare workers at nursing homes and families families of nursing home residents to take away from the Delta variant and what's going on with COVID right now? I think the thing that we need to take away from this is that this disease, um, this virus is something that we're going to be fighting for a long time. And I think we need to do all the things that we can to protect um, ourselves as individuals and ourselves as a community. I think that those of us that are are young and healthy and able to take the vaccine um, without much problem at all, really should because what it really does is it it protects our elders. It protects the folks that among us that, that can't take this vaccine. That was St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis speaking with Marjorie Moore of Voice. Our David Casares edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener supported service of the University of Missouri St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. This has been The Gateway.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.